Hi everyone, it's Jack Powell with another video, and today I'm going to be talking about Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF, better known by its ticker symbol SCHD, something that I've held personally and continue to hold personally. And it's a very popular topic on YouTube, mainly because it's had very good returns since its inception, around 13% on average since inception before this year. And this year it's getting absolutely smoked by the S&P 500, which is up 20% to SCHD's just 0.29% at the time of making this video. May even be flat or negative right now. Prior to this, it was destroying the S&P by a, de a decent amount. You look at the returns over the last five years, SCHD is up 46.29%, S&P 500 up 61.5%. That's essentially, the, without this year, it will be beating the S&P 500. And this year, it's a kind of a crazy year for the S&P 500. A lot of multiple expansion of the index. Currently trading for a P of in the high 20s. This is far above the average P of the S&P 500. So it seems like a relative aberration of a year. Whereas this dividend ETF, as you can expect, is mainly based around income. And is not really aiming or is it based around high PE tech stocks, NASDAQ type stocks, that's not what this is trying to do. But I'm going to analyze its holdings, analyze its returns, how it's, how it's doing for investors, how what $10,000 would have do if you held for 20 years average returns, that type of thing. Analyze what I think of this business later on, which I'm sure you can guess because I, I hold this personally. I am a fan of this, but I'm going to continue going through it and then you can f figure out what you think for yourselves. Here's a brief overview of some of the key characteristics of the fund. Total net assets of over $50 billion. Weighted average market cap, and it is market cap weighted, of just shy of $150 billion as of the 30th of June, with an average price to earnings ratio just shy of 14, significantly lower than the S&P 500. Price to cash flow of around 9, significantly lower than the S&P 500. Average return on equity of 38%, which is obviously outstanding. Beta versus the benchmark, very low. That's kind of what they're aiming for. If you invest in dividend stocks, and primarily one of the reasons you would do that is because they tend to have a lower beta, lower volatility versus NASDAQ stocks, NVIDIA, blah, blah, blah. Higher growth stocks inherently come with higher volatility and higher risk. Portfolio turnover rate, just shy of 30%, it has 104 holdings, and it is generally has a passive style. The portfolio is 99.97% stocks and is reasonably well diversified by sector. Exactly what you want really, the largest being industrials 18.13% but no one sector above 20%. And really, this is perfect for the target market. The target market for this is long-term investors that dollar cost average month after month after month just continues to grow. Interestingly, market cap, as again you would expect for trying to come up with a low beta, low volatility kind of low risk portfolio is very few companies with a market cap less than a billion dollars or small caps even i would consider small caps in the u.s market less than five billion dollars even in the one to three billion dollar range there's only 1.1 percent of the portfolio with 23.2 percent being the 15 to 70 million range and the rest being above that which i would consider large caps in the dj dividend 100 index there's no stock that is occupies more than 4% of the index. In SCHD's case, occasionally they will, these will creep up due to the stock price going up before rebalancing, but generally no one stock should occupy more than 4% of this business's assets. In this case, Broadcom is the larger position, 4.28%, followed by Avvi, Home Depot, United Parcel Service. Each of these occupies more than 4% of the portfolio, but this will come down on the next rebalancing, I'm sure. How the... The Dow Jones index is selected is that they have a couple of criteria. One that is has at least 10 years consecutive dividend payments. There's no growth requirement like dividend aristocrats, for example. It needs to have a minimum float adjusted market cap of $500 million, so no micro caps. And it has to meet some minimum liquidity criteria, meaning it can be easily traded essentially. The index components are then selected by evaluating the highest dividend yield in stocks. So many of these businesses you see are relatively high yield businesses. For example, Abvi, Home Depot, relative high yield, particularly likes of Chevron, is a high yield in dividend investment. Cisco also a very high yield. It's also based on cash flow to total debt, return on equity, and five-year dividend growth rate. Stocks in the index are weighted based on a modified market capitalization approach. They are typically aiming for significant dividend increase versus the S&P 500 because 
that is diluted by a number of growth stocks or non-dividend paying stocks. And right now the dividend is just over 3%, which is a significant premium to the S&P 500. Many of these businesses that you'll see here at the top end of the portfolio are solid, growing year over year. So we make all them blue chip businesses that grow free cash flow on, an, on a continual basis. They have low total debt on for the most part, high returns on equities, high dividend yields for the most part, and good five-year dividend growth rates. Of course, some years, essentially by design, the fund will be beaten by the S&P 500 and the NASDAQs. One of the reasons, of course, is because it's not really trying to track these. It's trying to attack the Dow Jones US dividend index. So it excludes all non-dividend paying companies, many of which this year, for example, are NASDAQ components that have absolutely smoked the market. NVIDIA, Meta Platforms, Tesla, Palo Alto Networks, Salesforce, Amazon, Adobe, Fortinet, Apple, blah, blah, blah. Apple is actually dividend paying, but wouldn't qualify due to its low dividend yield. But many of these are having excellent years, up over 50% because they were beaten down a bit. Alphabet, for example, as well, at the bottom of that list. Many of these are over 50%. And because of the top end of the S&P 500 is dominated by those non-dividend paying or low yield dividend paying businesses, it's market weighted index. This drags the, the index up significantly. That's why the NASDAQ is up so much. That's why the S&P 500 is up so much. And SHG just doesn't benefit from this. Now, you can take this as a positive or a negative, however you want to pay it. Of course, it also lacks the inherent volatility of having some of these businesses. These are, some would say, for example, the likes of NVIDIA or Align Technology, which is seventh on this list, high growth, high volatility businesses. Boom or bust, they often have a very wide range in the 52-week lows. That's not really who SCHD is trying to appeal to, people who want to invest in these businesses. It's looking for long-term investors that are just going to dollar cost average regularly and hope to beat the market slightly rather than going for these boom or bust plays essentially in my opinion. Currently SCHD's dividend yield is 3.45% with a payout ratio in the region of 50% which is again targeted, pays out quarterly and the annual dividend growth is just over 7%. Annual dividend yield is 260 based on today's price. Total returns over the recent years again about 13% common value over it average prior to this year. High, well, low volatility, high returns on average, two years of losses in the last 10. Generally good returns, over 10% in every other year. Some years it does really well, some years it doesn't. Because it's tracking dividend paying funds. In times when growth beats value, it is sure to lose against the S&P and the NASDAQ particularly. In times when value beats growth, for example, it's sure to beat the S&P 500 or most likely to. And this is just something that you have to be aware of when investing in these businesses, or this ETF even. Just for fun, I did a compound interest calculation. So if it continues to return 13% in perpetuity, which is obviously by no means guaranteed at all, from an initial balance of $10,000 without even adding anything, and without withdrawing of course, in 25 years, at 13% compound annual growth rate, $10,000 becomes $253,000 without dividends reinvested, which would obviously be a fantastic return. So in summary, SCHD isn't doing so hot this year because it excludes growth stocks to have a lower volatility. And it's it's an income ETF at the end of the day. So growth stocks don't really mean anything to it. It's trying to have a better dividend yield than the S&P 500, have low volatility and track the Dow Jones US dividend 100, all of which it does and generally outperforms the S&P 500 over the, or at least since its inception it had until this year when the S&P has absolutely blew out the water. My opinion is that this is a decent ETF investment. I have a small position in it. I don't think it's the best by any means, but of course, that's just my opinion. You should let me know your opinion down in the comments below. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is just my own personal opinion. I like this, this ETF. You might not. That's completely okay. You should speak to a registered financial advisor if you're thinking about purchasing any stocks or shares not just this, absolutely anything, and do your own research and diligence, because I'm not a financial advisor, you should take note of this as financial advice, obviously. That means I'd like to subscribe and join the video, I'll see you again next time.